Welcome. A couple of years ago, two colleagues and I published a paper called Five Frequently Fatal Freshman Physics Fantasies. Now one of these was the fantasy that weak areas won't be tested. Vectors is a weak area for many physics students, and they would like to hope to succeed in the class without being very good at vectors. This is like saying in basketball, I don't need to practice free throws because I can dunk. Or in football, I don't need to learn to throw the ball because I'm a defensive player. Or say in tennis, I don't need to learn the backhand because my plan is to scoot across the court fast enough to take everything forehand. Or in volleyball, not needing to learn an overhand serve because you figure your underhand serve is pretty reliable. Now, with athletic analogies, the idea that weak areas won't be tested is clearly a fantasy. Similarly, in physics, you really do need to learn vector analysis, how to break vectors down into components, how to reconstitute components back into vectors in order to succeed. Welcome, I'm Dr. Courtney. In this problem, we are asked to compute the net displacement of a sailboard that is traveling at a certain velocity and then subjected to an acceleration at an angle. So we're going to use equations of motion, also called kinematic equations. Since we're dealing with vector quantities, we need to consider these equations in component form. Now, the displacement, if you recall, is the magnitude of the position vector. So we'll denote it here as the magnitude of the vector r. And in this problem, we are given initial velocity, which we'll call the vector v0, acceleration, which is the vector a, and time. As we develop this problem, we will make a sketch of what's happening and then make a point-by-point -point plan for how we will evaluate the problem. So we have a sailboard traveling on some water at an initial velocity of 7.5 meters per second. We're not given a direction. That means we can choose the direction, and I would suggest that you choose it in a way that will make the mathematics somewhat easier. So the initial position of the sailboard we will call 0, 0, and we will give that velocity vector only an x component, so that the initial velocity is 7.5 meters per second. We're also given an acceleration vector. The acceleration vector has a magnitude of 0 0.48 meters per second squared. And we are further told that it acts at an angle of 30 degrees with respect to the direction of motion of the sailboard. So this acceleration vector is going to have an x component, a sub x, and a y component, a sub y. And finally, we're told that this acceleration vector acts on the sailboard for a time of 6.5 seconds. In order to evaluate this problem, one of the first things we want to do always is to check our units. Make sure that the given values are in MKS units and if not, to convert them. Secondly, we want to resolve any vectors into components. So we want to resolve the initial velocity vector and the acceleration vector into components. Next, we want to express equations of motion in each direction as a function of our given values. So the x and y positions in terms of um, the initial positions, the initial velocity, the initial, well, the acceleration, and the time. Then we can substitute the values to compute the components of the, the position vector, the final position vector.
And then we can compute the magnitude of that vector to determine the displacement. And finally, when we report our answer, we want to consider how many significant figures to use. In intermediate calculations, we'll retain a number of significant figures more than we will need at the end, and then we'll evaluate how many we should actually use uh, to report at the end. As we evaluate this problem, first of all, we'll check our units. We see that acceleration was given to us in meters per second squared and velocity in meters per second. So we are already in MKS units. Next, we want to resolve the velocity and acceleration vectors into its components. So the initial velocity in the x direction is equal to 7.5 meters per second because of the coordinate system that we have cho chosen. And for completeness, Note that the y component then of velocity is zero. Now the x component, we might need a little bit more room here. The x component of the acceleration vector is equal to the magnitude of that acceleration vector times the cosine of the angle at which it acts. Why the cosine? If we go back to our sketch, we see that the x component of the acceleration vector is the side adjacent to the angle of 30 degrees. And so that is going to be equal to 0.48 meters per second squared times the cosine of 30 degrees. And with careful calculation, making sure your calculator is in degree mode rather than radian mode, we find then that that is 0.4157 meters per second squared. Now for the y component of acceleration, we also begin with the magnitude of the acceleration vector times the sine of the angle because the vertical component or the y component of acceleration is opposite to the angle that we're considering. So that is 0 0.48 meters per second squared times the sine of 30 degrees, which is just a half. And so we end up with a y component of 0 0.24 meters per second squared. Thirdly, we want to express our equations of motion in terms of given values. So in the x direction, that the position is the initial position plus the initial velocity in the x direction times time plus one half the component of acceleration in the x direction times the square of time. And the analogous equation for the y component of position Now we can substitute the values that we've computed into these equations to find the resulting positions. So x will be equal to x naught. Remember in our coordinate system we chose our initial position to be 0, 0. So the initial x is 0 plus the x component of velocity which was 7.5 meters per second times the time 6.5 seconds plus 1 half the x component of acceleration, which we computed as 0 0.4157 meters per second squared times 6.5 seconds quantity squared. Through careful calculation, we find that that position is 57.5317 meters. Similarly, the y position, the initial y position is also 0. The initial component of velocity in the y direction, recall, was also zero. So we have zero meters plus zero meters per second times 6.5 seconds. And I know you might be tempted to skip that term altogether, but it's a good way to train your mind not to forget terms in problems where that uh, term will not be zero. Plus one half. 0 0.24 meters per second squared, which was the vertical component of acceleration, times 6.5 seconds squared. And through careful calculation, we find that the y component of the position vector is 5.07 meters. Now I've retained 
a number of significant digits beyond the whole number here, and we're going to continue to do that until we get to our final answer. Our next step, that was our next step, that was step four, substituting values. Now we want to compute the displacement. Let's express R as a vector. So we have the X component, 57.5317 in the I direction, plus 5.07 in the J direction meters. The displacement then is the square of the X component plus the square of the Y component all under the square root sign and that gives us a displacement of 57.7547. This is the answer we were looking for and now it's time to consider significant figures. If we look back at our given values, each of these has two significant digits. So we will round our displacement also to two significant figures, 58 meters. How can we determine whether or not this answer makes sense? The first step is to look at your units. We took just a few extra seconds as we were substituting values into our equations for the components of position to include the units. So if we go back and double check just the units, we have meters per second times seconds, we have meters per second squared times seconds squared, so we are left with units of meters for the x position. And we'll double check the y position as well, and we see that we have units of meters for the y position also. When we computed the magnitude of the displacement, the magnitude of the position vector, which is displacement, we have meters squared and meters squared square root, and I did not write the units here, so we have meters, which is also what we would expect. What else can we do to see whether or not our answer makes sense? Well, let's try bounding the answer. What can we use for a lower bound and an upper bound? What if we consider a lower bound on uh, the x position? What if ax was zero? There was no acceleration. And all we had was our initial velocity times the time at which it acts, over which it acts. So we have the position would then be 7.5 meters per second times 6.5 seconds, and that gives us about um, 49 meters. So if there were no acceleration, the sailboard would have traveled 49 meters over the 6.5 seconds. So that's a lower bound because we know that the acceleration was non-zero. What if the acceleration in the x direction was the whole magnitude of the acceleration vector of 0 0.48 meters per second squared? then our x position would be um, that 49 meters or 7.5 meters per second times 6.5 seconds plus one half 0 0.48 meters per second squared times 6.5 seconds squared and then our x position would be 60 meters. So that gives us an upper bound on the x uh, component of the displacement. So this is our upper bound, and this is our lower bound. And we see that our answer, 58 meters, lies between our lower and upper bounds. Actually, 58 meters is not the number we're considering. Since our lower and upper bounds are on the x component of the displacement, we should compare it to here 57.5, which also comes out to 58 meters, uh, rounded to two significant digits. So by checking our units 
as we computed our values and by considering a lower and upper bound for the x component of displacement, we have confidence that our answer is correct.